Thank you, Dave, for this opportunity to present you some of my work today. I'm really excited. And um, I think if you were at the keynote presentation this morning, uh, Sergey already gave us a great introduction on how machine learning and AI can be applied in various parts of the drug development process. And I will talk about some parts of it that we tackle with our method. Uh, we use an approach called multi-GML, which is a graph machine learning based approach for the prediction of adverse events. And so in general, adverse drug events, if you haven't heard of it, are they are unwanted and harmful side effects of a drug. And it can have really considerable economic and clinical costs. Usually, um, late stage clinical trials fail because of one main reason, being adverse drug events that are unforeseen and then just occur in this late stage of the clinical trials. That's why it leads to high costs in the whole drug development process. Furthermore, we have or we can see prolonged hospital stays, hospital admissions, and an increase of patient mortality because of these drug adverse events. And ultimately, they lead to a loss in uh, patient trust in healthcare providers, of course. So that's why the prediction of adverse events prior to the start of a clinical trial is really vital for the success of a drug. And so, of course, there are computational approaches out there for adverse drug event prediction that are also graph focused, um, but they do have their limitations. So usually they do not integrate this richness of information of biological associations um, from several databases and they also do not really integrate this richness in multimodal information on all of the structure, like proteins or um, drugs that are out there. So what we thought was to address these limitations and develop an integrative graph machine learning approach that is end-to-end uh, -end trainable and to integrate all this information that is out there and could really be leveraged. So uh, we use interaction databases, biological interaction databases on protein-protein interactions, on drug gene associations, on various types that in the end can form a heterogeneous knowledge graph. Um, we use also multimodal features on the entities. We use, for example, gene expression data. We use um, chemical fingerprints, um, data from EHR records and clinical claims. And that is all out there and can be leveraged. And we also use, in this approach, graph neural networks as a way to really make use of the data, integrate it, and use it for our prediction. The idea in general is that ADE, so ADE as an adverse drug event, uh, prediction can benefit from the integration of a large number of relevant resources, and therefore the risk of late stage clinical trial failures can really be reduced. So now I'm going to present you our approach. And um, the first step was to actually generate a bio biomedical knowledge graph that is comprehensive and consists of various resources. You might recognize some databases like Keg, um, StringDB, DrugBank, et cetera. They are quite well known. And of course, we did some database harmonization and parsing to generate um, a heterogeneous and multi-relational knowledge graph. So our knowledge graph in the end, that's just an abstract figure for you to understand the components. It has drugs, uh, phenotypes, and proteins as uh, entities, and then we have different relationships, so different types of relations between them. Then, of course, we do not just want to use this information of connectivity, so what relations are out there, we want to enrich our knowledge graph. And Usually these graph-based approaches, they just focus on a topology. So uh, we decided to take some additional information on the entities themselves into account. We have, for example, molecular fingerprints of the drugs uh, that we generated. We have gene expression signatures. We have morphological profiles of drug perturbation experiments for the drugs in general. For the proteins, we leverage some information on protein sequence embeddings. And we also generated um, a gene ontology fingerprint, if gene ontology tells you something about the biological processes that a protein is involved in. And 
Also on basically these phenotypes and clinical concepts, we have um, clinical concept embeddings that leverage claims data and EHRs uh, to really annotate these phenotypes better. So if we now take a network perspective on this task of adverse event prediction, we can actually see it as a link prediction task in a knowledge graph. And um, for accomplishing this task, we basically need three steps. First, we need to create a biometrical knowledge graph that is a network that just represents the space in which we engage. Um, and then we want to learn the embeddings of the nodes into the, of the knowledge graph. And usually what we try to do is to make our model embed nodes that are similar, so that are close in the network to each other, um, close in the embedding space. And when we have that, we can actually predict the likelihood of an edge or a link or a relation, whatever you want to call it, depends on your, uh, your field, in the knowledge graph. And that's basically how we try to tackle this. Our approach has several components, and um, so we have a multimodal embedding layer because we, we use this multimodal information and we deal with the heterogeneous data. We have, of course, the numerical ranges that are different and various data formats, so we really try to tackle it with this approach. Then we have a graph neural network component where we have two variants to encode the data that's out there. And then we use a decoder to decode the embeddings and predict the relationships. I'll tell you a bit about each of the components, but just to have a, a peek into it. So uh, in the multimodal embedding layer, we basically learn the hidden embeddings um, of each modality separately at first. So on the right-hand side, you can see an example of the drug no type in general, where we have three different types of modalities. So we have the molecular fingerprint, gene expression profile, and the molecular profile. And after learning each modality separately, we concatenate and fuse the embeddings, and then we learn a shared multimodal embedding. And um, this is basically what we're going to use further on in the graph component. So um, in the GNN components or graph neural network based component, we use relational graph neural networks. That means we really differentiate between the relationship type that is there in a network. Because if you think about a biomedical knowledge graph, it doesn't make sense to take a protein-protein interaction um, in the same way as, for example, a drug protein interaction, like you just need to differentiate between them. And we use uh, so the multi-relational multi knowledge graph and the fused node features as input. And then we have two different types of networks. So one is the relational graph convolutional neural network, which uses a neighborhood aggregation method. So we basically aggregate over the first order neighborhood in the first step um, to really learn this representation of the node of interest. With the relational graph attention network, we can leverage an attention mechanism and basically learn attention weights for each of the nodes in the neighborhood. That is really important because later on, we can leverage this information for the explainability of our model. So I will come back to that later on. In the decoder, we just use the node embeddings to decode the relations in the knowledge graph. It is um, a dist mode, if you've heard of it, it's a bilinear form, and we calculate the score for the likelihood between a drug and an adverse event. But, um, of course, we can't just predict this, we can predict any link in the knowledge graph, so between drugs and targets, or between genes and phenotypes. And now I can just show you a bit of our model results and comparison to general geometric approaches or knowledge graph embedding approaches um, that you might have heard of. Um, in the bottom, you can see our multi-GML uh, relational graph convolutional and graph attention networks, which use um, basic embeddings, so randomly initialized embeddings, and uh, these feature embeddings that I was talking about beforehand. We first trained it on this task of general link prediction. So how good can our model just predict any kind of link in the knowledge graph? Those are the first two columns. Um, and then we actually hyper-parameter optimized it. So we did some tuning and then optimized it for this task of side effect or adverse drug event prediction, where we saw it actually performs really well. And just the unoptimized model 
where we just tried it out for gene phenotype prediction, also outperforms the other models. So now I want to give you just a little peek into one distinguishing feature of our approach, which is its explainability. So I told you earlier that via using this graph attention layer, we can actually leverage this information on the attention weights on the edges and extract it. And that is basically what I did. So I looked into the edges that were weighted high by the network. And on the left, you can see the visualization. So the thicker edges um, for the prediction in red are the ones that are weighted higher by the network. And um, so I basically looked into the literature, found backup in there. So for this evidence of these links that were weighted higher by the network. And also, apart from looking at the topology of the network and trying to see, okay, which path and which nodes were actually important for the prediction, it was also interesting for us to look into the input that we use for the model. So like, you remember we had this um, gene expression fingerprint for the drugs. And so we basically used the integrated gradients attribution method to predict how important each input index was. And um, it basically just scores the input data based on the model's predictions. And then I could identify the genes in this molecular signature that were important in the prediction. And so these are the attributions. And what we then did was to take the top influential genes and run a gene expression um, signature analysis, uh, gene ontology over representation analysis on it to get biologically meaningful insights. And with this, I can already summarize. So our multi-GML model for adverse event prediction, it leverages biomedical knowledge graph and uh, multimodal features together with graph neural networks. It achieves excellent prediction performance. Um, it is explainable post hoc, and it gives us biologically meaningful insights. And due to the versatile model architecture, we can actually use it for various tasks of like drug phenotype, um, drug target, and gene phenotype predictions. And we also have a publication on the left, and the code is available for the model on the right. If you want to have a look, um, I'd be really happy to also stay in touch further and answer any questions. And of course, I also want to acknowledge um, all the people that were involved in this work and the success, um, my professor from the Fraunhofer Institute, Holger Fröhlich, and all other colleagues. And with this, I can say thank you, and I'm open for any questions. Thank you, Sophia.